Come on All right, down. guys. Uh, we are streaming live, Cybercast, episode 24 of the Transformer podcast. We're going to be talking about Transformer news, rumors. Uh, we're also going to be talking about should there be a black Batman, um, a few other you know toy little topics and stuff like that. So hopefully you guys enjoy, but I'll go ahead and hand things off to Dakota, and he can introduce everyone. What's up, guys? I'm Dakota. Um, you can find me on YouTube, Xbox, and all other forms of social media at Primal Sabbath. And uh, I guess I'll hand things off to uh, my old buddy Jay here. Hi, I'm Jay. <laughs> Follow me on Twitter at NemesisJazz13. And these two guys are our guests, and I'll let them introduce our, themselves. Ourselves? You almost said ourselves. I, I almost did, yes. Uh, well, that's how things go. They can introduce themselves now. Go get a Red Bull, man. <laughs> or, you know, just just, just a... No, nope, I gotta leave it alone. <laughs> I, I keep forgetting, I gotta just I just gotta leave stuff alone. All right, well, you're Antron, why we can't have nice things. Before they can find you, man. Uh, yeah, my name's Anton, I'm Antron Prime. You can find me on the tube as you're watching now. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter at Antron Prime as well. Uh, PlayStation, I go on the bar, the ID of Powerglide. Say hello. And we also have Jameis as well, uh, Victory Saber. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell people where they can find you, man? I'm James. Um, you can find me on YouTube at Victory Saber 77. Um, and that's about it. Don't do the Twitter or do the Facebook. So there you go. <laughs> he doesn't mess around. He's not. He's yeah. not into, uh... he, he doesn't play all that kid bullcrap. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, all you, all you guys do on there is talk about like One Direction and stuff like that. So, uh, he goes, I'm not really into that. Rather, rather play with the bots. <laughs> all right, so starting off, I thought we would start off with a couple of funny pictures that my friend sent to me, and this basically is mom texts her daughter. So, what does IDK, LY, and TTYL mean? Uh, daughter responds, I don't know. I love you. Talk to you later. Mom replies, okay, well, I will ask your sister. <laughs> uh, I thought that was kind of funny right there. This is one that uh, Proto Man uh, tweeted out. And it's got the turtles in April, and it says, chicks dig guys that eat out. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> So uh, uh, the the things that um, we did not understand as children, uh, we we were were getting taught at a very early age, apparently. So. <laughs> yeah. All right, so this just up, and I saw this posted today. So this is possible Transformer Four titles revealed, and apparently, I guess you can like go in and maybe select which one that you prefer more. Too bad there's not a thing like this for a director, so you can just have like a list and you actually pick the director. It would not be Michael Bay if, and, uh, you know, if, if I got my pick. But uh, what do you think about these names here? Okay, we have Transformers Apocalypse, Transformers Last Stand, and what's the third one? Future Cast. Future Cast. Which okay, so it sounds like they're trying to rip off... Uh... X-Men. Yeah. 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 You forgot Transformers: Revenge of the Explosions. <laughs> yeah, that's that, that's what it probably should be called. But uh, you know, I think that's kind of cool to kind of let the fans pick, or I think that's what's going on with it, where they can actually pick, you know, maybe a possible title or kind of give us an, a heads up. But uh, it's not that big of a deal. They can call whatever they want, and they're still gonna do the movie how they want. They all sound a bit too dramatic, though. Apart from future cast, which has no sense whatsoever. Well, this one right here, Last Stand, that kind of makes me think that, okay, I thought we were supposed to get three more, like a four, five, and six, is, or does that mean that this is the very last one? Mm. So that, that kind of has me a little bit curious. Uh, then we had this rumor, Transformer Generations upcoming releases. They're showing up in Walmart computers, so you got Rat Trap, Night Beat, Crosscut, and Tinkor. Yes, cross cut. So yeah, I kind of want to see the night beat, and I'd like to see uh, because I know that we're gonna get that uh, Target Master Junior scoop. 
uh, that we saw them display at BotCon, uh, and it looked really good. It looked like it had the Fans Project design to it. Uh, I'd really like to see them step it up a notch and give us a night beat with you know being a Headmaster Junior. If they're going to be doing the Target Master Juniors, I'd like to see a Headmaster Junior. Mm, does it say what class these are? The Voyager, the um, Deluxe? Let's see, uh, they're going to be Deluxe figures. Deluxe. Oh, that'd be interesting. I'm interested in Crosscut because he was part of the IDW announced him as the part of Squadron X when it was like the Decepticon version of, of the Wreckers. So, I don't know whether he's going to take that form or is it going to be an Autobot or something like that, but I'd be interested to see what cra- what comes out of Crosscut and whether we see if he is the start of Squadron X, then maybe we might get the other Fal- um, the others. I think it's funny to uh, go down here and read some of these comments in the discussions, like the first one. I've not heard of any of them. <laughs> what line what? are they from? You can definitely tell the you know that's someone that just got into Transformer Prime or you know the Bayformers. Yeah. All right, and this piece of information, uh, this was kind of released early this week, but uh, the the cutoff date was supposed to be, I don't know, very soon. Like I think at the very beginning of this week, uh, it's actually been extended to uh, September the sixth. Uh, so you've got uh, a few days here to pick, you know, which masterpiece figure that you want for the 30th anniversary fans' choice line. Now, the only way that you can uh, have a, a, an opinion or a pick on it is if you have these little Takara points or something like that. Am I am I correct there, guys? Yeah, I think that's how it is. Okay, and I really kind of wonder why they extended it. Did like. Was Fortress Maximus winning? And they were like, guys, we really don't want to do that. So let's keep on extending it until we get one in there that we really want to do. Hmm. Who, who's second? Is it Star Saber? Who's second? <laughs> well, this isn't the lineup of who's in what place. Uh, but it shows, you know, Fort Max, Power Max, Optimus Prime, Gen Rise, Star Saber, Dialus, uh, Optimus Primal, uh, which is going to be the, the first. And then Lyle Convoy, Big Convoy, R.I.D. Optimus Prime, Armada, Energon, Cybertron. And this is something from this uh, shiny website here. This is a custom, but even though it's a custom, you kind of know that this isn't too far of a stretch of the imagination, you know, because... We know that Hasbro's car loves to repaint stuff, and if they're stuck left with a bunch of Metroplexes, it's not going to be hard to you know swap out some of these pieces and stuff like that. But I actually like this a lot better, and it nice. gives you a good idea of the the design of the figure because I really could never see it uh, when people did reviews because they always have like white backgrounds and the Metroplex is white, and then all I could see is like the little black pieces. Cool. Nice and I love death. the stance here. Like, everyone that I've seen that has displayed this guy, his, like, legs have just been straight up and down, and he kind of looks really weird. Uh, but I do like the way that this guy has him displayed. Yeah. Uh, you guys that uh, have the Fall Cybertron Metroplex, uh, would you get a Metro Titan as well? I would, yeah. I like the character. <laughs> So I probably would pick them up if they had them. I like the whole mythos behind them, the Metro Titans and stuff. So eventually when they get a Hasbro or a Hasbro Titan, I'll definitely pick this one up as well. Oh, nice. All right, and we'll move on to this. So the we've actually discussed it like a month or so prior that uh, – a, another company is going to be coming out with a straight-up knockoff of the G1 Scorponok. And we have some pictures here to kind of show you know, which one is the G1 and the, you know, the knockoff and how you can uh, tell between the two. And I'll just kind of go through the pictures. You guys can talk about it, but obviously you got the ears here. Where this is that uh, flat pin, and this is a screw. So there's one little thing. That dog is hyper, man. Can you can you add him? 
I'm gonna throw Sounds them like up. Sounds like he's just like knocking all your figures off the shelf. <laughs> he's trying to get out the door. <laughs> <laughs> and I believe this is where they're basically talking about the. Um, this is the knockoff itself without the stickers. There it is, all stickered up. Or the, the nice. genuine, yeah. genuine one stickered up. So that's the ear piece that we're talking about there. But keep in mind that this is easily, uh, you can detach that. So if someone wanted to just be a total jerk on eBay, they could buy the knockoff and then just go buy this one little oh. helmet piece and attach that. So it's very important that you pay attention to all these things because the next piece are the leg sections. So you can see that you've got the genuine here and the knockoff over here. You can actually buy legs on eBay as well. So, um, I sell as market. Yeah, I've been and there you get the wheel jack too. And there's a knockoff with a screw. So basically, you don't want screws. You see screws, shy away from it unless you don't care if it's a knockoff. The colors will be a bit more. The colors well, are a bit more vibrant, aren't they, on the uh, the knockoff one though? So. Uh, that's a little bit hard. Just mm. because, I mean, it being an older. Bigger. You don't know if, uh, yeah. you know, maybe it's got a little bit of uh, color damage and stuff color like damage. that. Now, this is one that I, I couldn't really put my finger on exactly what they were pointing out. Uh, James, do you know? This is the genuine. And it then just... this is the fake one. I think it's the panel lines. Okay. It's like there's another pick with the guns that you can kind of see. Um, there's different like kind of lines in the actual molded gun from the real one to the um, KO one. And this is a, a pretty good dead giveaway here. You can definitely see with the eyes. One of these days, knockoff companies, you'll get it right. Hopefully they don't. But you'll see a lot of them where, um, you know, People are missing heads and stuff. These little Zarek figures, they go for quite a bit of money. I can see the differences in the purple here. can't believe you guys just heard that. And there's another little, you can kind of see the face where you got quite a bit of silver here, and this is just like a, a tiny bit uh, here on the guns as well. I'm presuming that the, the, the knockoff head can fit into the, the original body. Of yeah, I'm, well. I'm sure it will. It's all about the price. What's the price going to be? And then you have all these little chrome bits as well that it's like all chipped up. It's brand new. So it just kind of looks like on this knockoff that, I mean, there's already, you know, problems with chrome and paint and stuff like that that, uh, if this is brand new out of package, you're probably going to look at a lot of problems down the line. And you're just probably best off buying an original G1. Definitely. Even if you're trying to save a few bucks. Oh, yeah. And I, I, I can almost... May, may want it for parting it. Well, I can almost guarantee you that these stickers probably don't stay on there very well. Yeah, well, but that's what Reaper labels are for, though, right? True. What's the average price of a um, Scorpionach, an original Scorpionach? Uh, man, it really all depends on what you're willing to pay. I think I paid a little too much for my. I paid two fifty. It was a hundred percent complete, and it was just like minty condition. Mm. 
I mean, that, that auto assembly this year, they were going for, I was surprised they were going for probably just as much as the brand new um, Metroplex, and that was complete. And they were in pretty good, pretty good condition as well. Yeah, he's one of the very first figures that I bought when I first got into, um, you know, collecting. Oh, mm. well, I think we already looked at all these. It's just the same things over and over again. All right, and Dakota, did we lose you for a moment? Yeah, uh, again, for some reason. Huh. Well, this is something that Hasbro is going to be doing. Uh, the Generations Megatron Calvin Johnson Football Edition. Uh, basically, he's comes with a little Nike football, and then his uh, feet are done up like... Their little Nike cleats, and they got a little Nike swoosh on there. Uh, basically, for and people I think that don't his know, his signature is uh, is actually whenever he's transformed into self stealth bomber mode, it's that guy's signature is, is on him as well. Yeah, and for people that don't know, Calvin Johnson's a wide receiver number eighty one for the Detroit Lions. Uh, they call him Megatron, is kind of his I guess self given nickname. <laughs> Pretty cool, I like it. I like it. The, the only problem that I have is they should have given him Detroit Line colors, and I could see this selling a lot better for you know people that are Calvin Johnson football fans. I kind of like it. Is, it. is it going to be a limited edition release? Or? Uh, I'm not really sure on that. I, I mean... Obviously, Detroit's going to get a lot more stock than everyone else thinks. All right, so there's that guy. That's pretty nice. And, like and then, uh, I forget who it was... Planet Icon, uh, they actually said on Twitter that this guy is supposedly as tall as Fort Max and Generations Metroplex. Wow. That's ridiculous. So that, that's what uh, they said on Twitter. And I was just like, this it's basically a huge over-articulated action master. Uh, you know, comes with like, you know, the Matrix and a cool, nice-looking base, but I think it's too big for Optimus. Uh, As a standalone piece, it'd be nice. Does it? Does it glow up? Does it light sound? Is it lights? How uh, how much diecast is in it? They those. I mean, good questions, but it doesn't say. They they don't they don't yeah. say. They just give it looks pictures. cool for like, uh, you know, just just robot collectors, I guess. <laughs> Uh, it looks like his eyes are glowing here, and the Matrix, Matrix as well. Uh, this is a figure we took a look back. I at love a, all at a look at a at a wall back yeah. where you can take all the little panels off and stuff like that. It like reminds that. me of a uh, like the Metal Build series um, of like Gundams. That's really good. That the cutaway sections. I like that. That's pistons and stuff. It's like a giant uh, super robot to go configure. Yeah. Yeah, it looks nice. And there it is to uh, the Hasbro Roadbuster there. Very nice. That's freakishly large. And this gun, as you can see, that you can kind of take it all apart and give them a Gatling gun and stuff like that. All right, and these are just the in-hand images of the Transformer Go Fishamaru. If I'm not saying that correct, then I apologize. <laughs> this actually looks pretty cool. I probably like this guy better than I like the other ones. Yeah, I mean, the, all the other ones still look awesome. I just, I just hate that Hasbro didn't import them. I, I'd really be into those guys. Yeah, I don't know. Looks a bit like I don't know. He has like the body of the old Jetstone from R.I.D. Toy. Yeah. Like a, 
the triangular sort of spiky. Yeah, that would make a that would make a really awesome uh, Jihaxis because Lord <laughs> knows we haven't had him in a while. Definitely. Probably pick him up to repurpose him as that. He's not far off to cut like certain colors as well. So, Jay, are you, are you getting? Uh, do you have any of the the go figures, or are you, you plan on getting any? I haven't got any yet. Um, they look really cool. They remind me a lot of the Brave toys. So I probably will get them later on down the road. But I don't know. Yeah, it would be thanks. nice if Hasbro would put them you know, like import them into the states. But I don't know if I want to pay that much money for these guys. Yeah, that's why I, I kind of figured that you might end up getting them just because you know they they just scream brave. You know, yeah, they, they look exactly like it. And this is something that has been posted at Robot Kingdom. I uh, forget the price on this guy. Uh, Fifty four ninety. So basically, this is not a super deformed figure. This is your classics Nemesis uh, Prime here. Uh, and basically, it's this little thing here. So you got these little jetpack things that you can see that you can obviously attach here, and this little truck that's supposedly supposed to look like Optimus Prime. It can actually transform and become a giant head to put on your figure, so you can look like you just got this big <laughs> super deformed figure. Oh my goodness! I mean, it's, it's this doesn't look too bad, but that little head thing, it just yeah. The 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 add-on makes them that's pretty cool. I like it, and yeah, I do like it. It's not like the big head thing. So at a uh, Robot Kingdom, basically about fifty-five bucks, and this item's limited to two thousand pieces, mm -hmm. and pre-orders they're up, and it'll be available September twenty thirteen. So any day. This is something that I thought was abs I thought that someone was pulling oh. a joke on me whenever I saw this thing. But this is third-party company UME Toys Scam Wave. <laughs> Scam Wave. <laughs> and this is their Nate prototype. Says it all. <laughs> uh, this is their prototype of it. it... <laughs> oh man! It looks like a puppet. It looks like it should be puppeteered. This looks like something my son would have drawn. Um, what? <laughs> who, who thought that was a good idea? Because <laughs> last episode we were talking about like if you created a third party company, what would you come out with? And apparently this person said <laughs> scam wave. And this is what he's going to look like. Jeez. Oh, uh, looks like uh, let's see, had the pre-order date. <laughs> so if you want this guy, are we uh, still talking about your super deformed? Uh... No, we're talking about Scam Wave. And you can pick this guy up. He will be available. Okay. Oh, dude, that looks disgusting. <laughs> well, it says he'll be available uh, by <laughs> September 5th of 2013, and you can pick him up at umetoys.net. Yeah, check that out, Dakota. This is the prototype, baby. I want to know where his special features are. <laughs> oh, yeah. It looks looks. like it's made out of wood, and someone just painted it. <laughs> and it, looks it like also the... reminds me of that uh, one cartoon yeah. anime. I think it was uh, like Unico or something like that. Oh, I saw this. Looks like the uh, looks like the Iron Giants. Oh, right. Garbage. <laughs> well, you think that was bad? Uh, it's Iron well, Giants, Fat Uncle. What? <laughs> you think that was bad? Take a look at this guy. Oh shit! <laughs> this is Unique Toys War Panther Violence. That's, <laughs> That's a pretty about, strange name. Uh, let, let's skip this one because it's dreadfully <laughs> awful. It's starting to look pretty good now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just clicking on the pre-order button now for Scamwave. <laughs> oh. yeah, how much is Scamwave? Uh, I'm not sure. You'd have to go to that, that website <laughs> that I was saying. The, th the trick is... I'm is sure the prices are a scam. <laughs> UME, what they wanted you to do is before you get the option to actually click on whether you want to buy it and see the pictures, you have to look at all these pictures. What the? Uh, 
you have to uh, you have to click through all these unique toy uh, predicons before you look at theirs. Oh, well, it's not <laughs> much the better. It really is bad. Are you sure you want to buy it? <laughs> <coughs> I I really wouldn't be trusting a website though that's on that scam wave one, considering that I haven't seen that on like a TF Source Capture Prey Big Bad Toy Store type thing. And it's their own website that you could order it from them. And on top of the thing, you're calling it scam wave. I mean, you're really not earning my trust on whether I want to give you money. This it, it's is my uh, Don't forget it, that. Wow. I I was hoping that when the first the first sort of shots come about what unique toys were doing, like the silhouetted Predacons, and you think, oh yeah, finally a, a really good articulated combined and Predator King, and then they just shot themselves in the foot with Fal Falcon. Is it the first one? Yeah. Uh, and then, ever since then, you've just been... It's been a joke, and I have heard several people... God, these stupid ads over here. Um, I've had several people that they they act like we're just crazy, that we think that it's a bad-looking figure, you know? Does it look like shit? Yeah. Does it smell like shit? Probably. <laughs> okay, it's, it's shit. <laughs> Is it sold this, at a shit price? Yeah. <laughs> this is the in-hand images of the Perfect Effect PEDX02. Uh, was it Arania? That's basically the black arachnid. This is a little. I think this is overpriced, and but it looks good. Uh, yeah, it looks. Sexy. James, you said I mean, that you like this, or you were looking forward to it, right? Hmm. I, uh, I, like I, it, I yeah. thought you said on like a previous Cybercast that uh, you like this figure, or you're wanting to pick it up. Maybe yeah, it's it pretty good. Maybe it's someone else. Uh, as a one-off, I'd like to pick it up. Obviously, price is the big. Yeah, I think it looks good. It, it looked it looked gorgeous. It, the the colors, the way they transition into each other, the the way that the way it's just everything's looked very intricate and stuff, and it looks it looks gorgeous. Even the the bike, the spider, the robot mode, the way it's it all interlocks. It looks really tidy. It looks nice. How much is it going for? Oh, wasn't it like one oh nine or something? It'll probably be that what hundred and fifty wow. bucks or something. I, no, I thought, I thought it was like one oh nine. I thought it was like one oh nine. I thought it was just a hundred even. Can can anything ride it? Can can a box actually yeah, mount? Too much. Well, here's the the packaging. Um, right here. They're, they're only small as well, aren't they? They're they're not like. They're about the same size as a Deluxe. Yeah, it's probably going to be about that size. Yeah. Yeah. And for it's 100 bucks, much. no way. Yeah, it's, it's too much. beautiful detail, beautiful, you know, looks yeah, like... Yeah, I like, the, I like the paint, how it fades from red to the skull to red, um, you know, on the little claws or whatever, but... Yeah, it's... Decepticons have all the best color schemes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm a bit huge fan of purple, so they usually always attracted to the uh, Decepticons. I do wish the I do wish the like Hasbro something sort of bring out the Decepticon a little lingerie range. <laughs> Imagine the purples and t the gold tinted. Like, yeah, I'm strapping you down tonight. Now here's some <laughs> more updated pictures of the third party. Fallout Cybertron Metroplex, so you can see him in his robot mode. I think we saw that previously uh, last week. But the new picture is they have him in his base mode, and they say that his mobile, you know, little tank mode or whatever you want to call it, uh, isn't featured. They haven't done it yet, but this is this is a little lame. Mm, it looks. Uh, when was the first thing? It looks similar to one the comic. The comics issue that um, I'm not sure if it was Atakusi had them like in like a, a more of a base mode like that, which he was very sort of like scrunched up rather than like his legs extended. But it looks more like um, Fort Max than it does Metroplex. Yeah, with the legs yeah. coming out like this. Very war for I think that, for, well. that company could have made more money is making Fort Max instead of uh, Metroplex. We were talking about this a couple of weeks ago, I think, on the last Cybercast I come on. 
Yeah. Um, you know, what, why, why would the third party, when Hasbro just released theirs, really you know, come out with another Metroplex when everyone was going to go for the Hasbro one at, at probably half the price? Probably better quality, yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. Should have gone with the Decepticon base. That would have actually sold a lot better. So yeah, that should do something like that. A Triptychon, uh, I think, you know, that way, you, you know, people, they got their Metroplex now, you, you hit them with the, while well, the emotions are high, and hit them with that Triptychon. You know? Definitely. Yeah. Uh, this is, I'll let uh, Dakota tackle this, but, uh, you know, Hasbro asked, and they're like, you know what, guys, have you, have you had enough of the generation swindle mode, or the follow subtron swindle mode, and, you know, as us Transformer fans, I think we can all agree that we said, no, there's not enough of these figures. And they said, well, <laughs> we're going to listen to you. Here you go. What small populated uh, country did they ask? And here is Fistatron. So, Dakota, what do you think about this, man? I think it was you... so much Hasbro as it is the Collector's Club. The Collector's Club... They're just like the Clutch Club is just like you know what guys. Uh, I'm but, uh, but anyways, the Clutch care. Club they're just like you know what guys. Uh, we uh we can't do anything else because we lost all of our fantastic ideas that we had going for us for um you know the last last couple of years. So hey, who wants a sixth record? Wouldn't that be fun? So combined with uh, this is the is this the sixth uh, or seventh window mode? So it's like it's actually like probably like the fifth to the stupid. Oh. You know that figure they're gonna sell it through their club store after the you know sixty seventy bucks plus shipping just like they do with you know all the other ones after the subscription services you can buy Mach Five's Iron Fist for fifty bucks and then like you know I think it's like five or six bucks shipping and so, I mean, you get the two pack as well absolutely you? you know that's stupid that's such a no, no, that's that's optional. You pay hundred bucks to get him with a uh, case. Oh. But you still buy Mach Five's Iron Fist, and it, you know, you're coming out twenty plus cheaper. All right, and that by the way, pretty... Charles sent me a text message asking who was watching the comments because I'm not. By the way, guys, you can't no. tell. Well, them. I'm watching them now. I just see that Charles said uh, that scam wave, uh, scam wave is pathetic looking. And, yeah, I couldn't agree more. Uh, if you're a Soundwave collector, maybe you pick it up. But I, even if I, I was like, I gotta have everything. Something like that in my collection. It's Just very like odd. It, definitely, like if you go, like if I was to go over to one of y'all's house, and I was kind of just looking around, oh, this is all cool stuff, and then I kind of saw that. That would probably be the thing that I would like pick up and just kind of wonder about you, maybe a little bit. It would definitely be something unique to have in your collection. Definitely would. All right, that's pretty much it for the you know, like news stuff. So basically, wanted before we get started into topics, uh, our guests were not on last week, and last week I thought we had kind of a really cool thing we were talking about is if you were to start a third-party company, starting off. Uh, Kind of the rules are is you're kind of jumping right into figures already, so you don't have to do the whole uh, add-on pieces or weapon sets or anything like that. You get to actual make actual figures, but the thing is, is your CEO, you have to think smart. You got to think how many repaints am I? Can I get out of this uh, without you know pissing people off? But at the same time, give them a nice product because this is my very first one coming out. At the same time, you know you can't do like you don't have the funds to like make a or back a third-party overlord or something like that, or a combiner. So, for example, mine were the Decepticon clones and Autobot clones. All four very exact designs in the robot form. There's just going to be a few little tweaks that I need to make, and two of them are going to be exact, you know, repaints of each other because they're the clones. But I could probably sell those for that $60, $65 range, you know, for the pair. So, Antron... What is your figure's 
that you want to put on the market? How are you going to market it? Um, I don't know. If, if I had the choice, um, and this is only because they're a rarity anyway, is the females, no, the females of Transformers. You now you've got your RC. And I know that's an RC that we've, we've already seen, but, you know, going into um, the likes of, there was a Firestar, Elite One, them kind of things, and sort of appealing going out the female side of things, or they could be sold as, you know, slight re retoolings of the RC mold, head, sculpt, and stuff like that. I I'm, I'm, I'm more interested in the, the, into the, the, the female brand, so the, the, the female Transformers and see what that would bring in, whether there's a limited number, a limited collector's piece. Yeah, I mean, one of the figures that I'm looking forward to the most is the Mastermind Creations RC figure, just because we really never had a proper RC, you know, given to us, and that one just looks amazing. So I, I think that would be again, a really good route to go. Yeah, because again, they the, the recolored that avenue in the green one. Is it? What is it? I don't know. What's yeah, the they, green they, one they, yeah, they yeah they. They're going to be recoloring it, and they're yeah. also they're keeping it basically the same design, but they're like moving legs around different, and instead of, you know, maybe not having wheels, you know, add a little wings here or something, S very minor stuff, to where they didn't really have to change a whole lot. Basically, change the transformation a little bit, and that way it gives you a different look versus oh, this is just a repaint of this. Yeah, I'd I'd like to especially if the ones from I mean, you could tell it as a full. A four-piece box set, even, and especially the ones from the Search for Alpha Trial, where you get like Five Star again, Moon Beam, is it, or Moon Racer, uh, Chroma, but Generation One. That'd be a nice touch, and I think what is it, IDW or Dreamwave done a uh, Ladies Night. So I'd go with the female side of things. All right, and um, I guess the same, you know, question for um, Jim. You know, what would be your product, and how would you try to market that? Um, I don't know. I would probably try and find something that's connected, maybe to the comic books, because you know that they're out there, and there's a ton of them. People just, you know, reading them and whatnot. But I don't know. As far as toys, you know, the Seekers are one that you can always just repaint over and over and over. And I would actually do maybe a more streamlined, more of a sleek looking um, Seeker, maybe Voyager class look. Not as big as maybe a Masterpiece, but a lot better than the actual like Henke or um, Generations line Seekers. Not as bulky, maybe a little bit better looking, better color yeah, that, apps and whatnot. That'd be a good one too because, uh, you know, like at, at BotCon, people just wanted those Seekers. I mean, they're paying triple the amount that they were, you know, that you could pick them up there, you know, just one day uh, after the convention, so. Yeah. Every, people just want, like, everything Seeker. And if you could give them a better product, <laughs> then there you go. All right, so I had a couple of topics, and a few of you guys had some as well. Uh, the first one that I wanted to kind of bring up is, you know, are we paying too much for masterpiece figures? Uh, you know, we've got the smaller ones that we're paying, you know, the seventy nine ninety nine. Uh, then you have the much larger ones that are one seventy nine or you know one eighty. Um, and these are you know to car prices. The thing that I was kind of looking at is, I have the figure and I, I was watching you know Victory Sabers review on the Takar masterpiece King X Kaiser, which is from the you know Brave series, and. You can still today pick that up. You can go on eBay, and he said that it came out in 2005. Uh, but it comes on eBay anywhere between $50, $60 to 100 and that's shipped. So it's a lot cheaper, and it was probably cheaper whenever it was re released back then. But it comes with die cast. It comes with a ton of accessories. Uh, the box, I like the box a lot more as well. It has the flap where you have the you know the open window to where you can kind of see everything. Uh, comes with you know a little stand for X Kaiser. So, looking at that, let's even say the highest price that you could pay right now on eBay is a hundred. That's still you know eighty bucks cheaper than you know what they're going for right now. So, are we p overpaying for masterpieces? Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> it, it's it's all 
in terms of speculation because I mean the the price of plastic has gone up significantly since uh, Masterpiece King X Kaiser came out. Yeah, it has. It's true. And you know, and also there's the supply and demand factor. You know, how much demand is there for a Masterpiece King X Kaiser, where there is for a Masterpiece uh, Soundwave or Masterpiece Starscream or Optimus or Megatron and so on and so forth. Uh, Transformers is all is obviously Takara's stronger brand, uh, so they're gonna they're gonna do that. I also like the fact that uh, I think I, I like I like the newer boxes, just the you know the the black kind of masterpiece with the velvet like thing on it. Uh, I think I like that packaging a little bit better than I would window packaging because window packaging would remind me too much of just a common retail release, you know. Mm. Well, in the uh, the Hexatron Mastermind Creation Hexatron, uh, you know, it, it looked closed, but it had the um, little flap, and it was actually had that window packaging in there. But the little flap, it was magnetic, which was really nice. Antron, what what do you think, man? Are we are we maybe paying a little bit too much? Because remember, King X Kaiser, he has all these more accessories and more gimmicks, and he's also got die cast in them. The legs are diecast. I think it goes to, to to sort of an individual collector of what the collector. I mean, I, I think is it Jay? Um, yeah. I, you know, it, it was just, it was just saying. You know, dude, is the masterpiece range all you collect? I mean, because if if you're looking at if if that's all you collect apart and you don't collect really anything else, then you know you. It, Yes, I'm just gonna say yeah. You, you you masterpieces are overly expensive anyway. Um, you know, for sh once shipping's added, added to it, you're looking at anything from 150 to 200 pounds, even you know sterling and whatever on your side, 200 200 dollars and stuff like that. Soundwave, especially when he first came out. You know, you there was one shop I found where I live. That was selling the the car version for two hundred pounds, and that's only with laser beak. Um, the bigger the mid the bigger characters who were getting the bigger releases, you know, like you said, with the fill them with more accessories maybe to make bump that price out, and the same goes with the little ones, the little side swipe and prowl. Give them all the accessories that we've seen within the show. Um, you know, for instance, look at the mega, the the Megatron pack. master. Yeah, you know, sound um, side type jetpack and stuff instead of selling it separately and stuff. But this is it's all part of like consumerism, isn't it? It's if they're gonna get money out of a little accessory or a sticker sheet, then they're gonna do it. Um, you know, look at look at the Megatron masterpiece that we first had. And all the little accessories we've got of that. We got a crimson. We got his mace. We got his gun. You know that was pretty good for the price, averaging about eighty pounds, ninety pounds. But unfortunately, the toy was crap. So <laughs> it worked either way. Whichever whichever market you're going to flood into, whether you are a masterpiece collector and that's all you're buying, it may even itself out. But it's still no excuse for high priced. Do do you? You guys kind of look at it as they've kind of put us in a bad spot because of who's to say that they're like, oh, well, we got to jump up all the prices. We need to jump up another twenty bucks. So now the you know the eighty ones go to a hundred, and this one eighty ones go to the two hundred. And if we kept on buying them, then they're going to be like, hey, you know, we really uh, the amount of people that decided they don't want to collect these because it's just getting too expensive for them. We actually made up with that with the higher price we're charging. So we still ended up, you look at bottom dollar, we still made more money. And what's to cause them from not making a, maybe another price hike to where they kind of put us in a bad position to where we want them, they know we want them. Uh, you know, we're getting more deeper into the you know line. I mean, we're, it's still early on. There's hundreds of figures that still, characters they can still do. Uh, but you know, there a lot of momentum is being built with the uh, masterpiece line, and we're getting so many masterpiece figures this year. Uh, next year will probably be up to like you know one a month almost. I I just think that 
if we qu- quit buying or we kind of take a stand as you know a transformer community, then they'll be like, well, we just won't make them then, you know, and it'll yeah. just kind of that's, like that's, sputter off like the encore line. That's if that would even happen. I mean, a lot of people talk about it, but no one's gonna stop buying. You know, a lot of people are like, oh yeah, I'm done buying from the collector club. Everyone just stopped buying. It's like no one's gonna do that. And th- yeah, that's They're exactly the point. I mean, they put us in a bad spot. It is because you know we 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 we've all said, oh, wouldn't it be great if we had this as a masterpiece or this? And you know, they latch on to that. They know where the big book. You know, they make it. Soundwave. Everyone that's I think everyone had screamed out for a Soundwave right from the start of the masterpiece line, and we got it. And you know, the, they've made the money. You know, if, uh, isn't it on its its third and final wave of the masterpiece Soundwaves? And now you know they're releasing them. At least the music that Peter was from with all the all the cassettes. Yeah, that's something that you you. It's kind of a kick in the balls that I right. have the Takara version that I paid one eighty for when it first came out, and then they're coming out with the second third wave and they decrease the price. So it kind of means like because I wanted to get it the first go around and make sure that you know I didn't miss out on it. I got you know kind of jacked with the the price because y'all could have done it this cheaper price the whole time, and then you're gonna come out with the Hasbro version, which was what well, was the price like a hundred or one twenty nine? I think it was one twenty nine. Uh, and then you add the four other. It was a hundred and thirty for it and all the cassettes. The the cassettes alone, the four cassettes <laughs> added was... alone, Takara was charging a hundred and twenty for the four cassettes. Jeez. So you kind of look back at it now and you're like. You mean you could have gave me like three hundred dollars worth of stuff that if I had to get it through Takara, it was going to cost me about three hundred dollars. I go through the Hasbro and it was one thirty. I mean, it should be that big of a price gap. That's it. It's it, it, it's 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 more. The cut of your cut now. I was gonna say the, the the thing is we never know whenever Takara or whenever Hasbro is going to bring over a masterpiece. Dakota, you might want to drop out and come back in. The thing that I don't like about the masterpiece is the fact that we're paying for an import price too, on top of, you know, just the fig, you know. Yeah. And it does suck that you know, like MP10 came to Toys R Us, was like 150 dollars cheaper than the Takara version. Then you know, Soundwave came out, and then we don't know until like what San Diego Comic Con that they're actually gonna release like the ones that are going to be Toys R exclusive for that year. So like Prowl could come out this year for like 80 bucks. He may be released at Toys R Us for like 49, which is going to suck. It, it, it also depends whether you, you're prepared to wait. You know, I think you know, this, this Transformers culture that we're in, you've got the collectors, you've got the consumers who want it now. You want it now. You want to be the first that Either jump on on YouTube and review this thing first, you know, and mm-hmm. review it first, or you you just want it now. And um, did they know that? You know, they've got their their people out there looking at these things on YouTube, on the net, Twitter, whatever. And you know, we we'll pay it without they'll charge whatever they want to charge, and we'll pay it because we want it. And then you know, once they've made. Yeah, X and X and X amount of profit. That's when they'll just drop it and drop it a bit, and then once they're not, once everyone's got one, then, you know, then the, then the next wave of consumers comes in, the ones who have waited, and they'll probably be better off. Hence, the Hasbro position with all the cassettes you're saving over a hundred, hundred and fifty. Yeah, you almost save two hundred. The cassettes yeah. alone. The total total figure and everything you save about two hundred bucks. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I, I can believe it. Yeah, I can believe it when you see it and go, oh my god, they, you know, the likes of all the toys that they sell them like 50, 60 pounds for two two cassettes. And then you get all these for well, even what the, the the masterpiece Hasbro's worth is all the cassettes only. It's like you're getting the, you're, you're getting the masterpiece sound wave free. Yep. It's That's exactly right. It, it's clever. It, it, it's clever marketing. It, it, it really isn't. As much as we may not know the ins and outs of it, it's genius in a way, and it's like, aha! <laughs> you know, you, you like you said, Josh, you bought the 
the ma- the sound wave when it first come out, and I've bought it months and months down the line. I've saved, and you think, just kick me in the balls now, why don't you? <laughs> it's, it's it's crazy. Yeah, it just it. I really l- would have liked to have been a fly on the wall in that you know Hasbro meeting, uh, because you know there was someone probably arguing that hey. You know, because of how much the Takara ones cost, we should we're probably doing our we could probably put this thing out for two hundred. You know, it, it still ends up you're getting it for a hundred twenty hundred twenty five dollars cheaper than you are if you went full blown Takara and you know all the cassettes, uh, and it won't look that big of a price gap. I mean, still one hundred twenty dollars is a huge price gap, but I mean, uh, people would have still paid it. But I think just one thirty. I mean, that's just that that makes you kind of stop and look and be like, so are should we have been paying a lot cheaper for these figures the whole time? I mean, wow. Well, what's what's the? I mean, I haven't got a masterpiece sound wave, but is there any difference in the plastic quality? Because I know I've seen some reviews on the Hasbro one with all the cassettes, and there was paint apps missing off it. There's paint apps missing off the cassettes, and the the people were saying, oh, the plastic they don't feel as tight. You know, is that is that the sacrifice we're still getting? Or? No, there's nothing wrong. Uh, I I think that this is you know just my two cents. I think some people, whenever they do reviews, even if it doesn't have anything really that's different, they I don't know. I don't want to say they make it up, but I mean <laughs> they kind of maybe they trick their mind into thinking that there's a little bit more to it than what there really is, and yeah, I don't know. They exaggerate a little bit more. Yeah, just so people can be like, oh, you know, this is what <laughs> this guy said, you know? The only difference <laughs> is Soundwave, the Toys R Us version, has yellow eyes and the Takara has red. Everything I'd else like, is spot on. Yeah. But, I'd but like to kind of touch on, a, real quick, just to, you know, because I haven't really been able to, like, um, say anything. Uh, <clears throat> I'd like to touch on the whole, you know, difference between Takara and, and, and Hasbro and people making up those differences, maybe to justify... The fact that they spent double technically what the Hasbro cost. Yeah, because uh, you know I ended up buying the Hasbro one. I've had the Takara, and I ended up buying the Hasbro one, and just you know selling the Dakota, you know the That's Hasbro me. version. So, see, so would you pay, would you pay again between the Hasbro and Takara version? Would you pay an extra twenty twenty dollars or twenty pounds just because it had a different colored visor? Well, People. taking the head apart and painting that little visor piece isn't very difficult at all. Although, you know, I've kind of grown on the yellow one. I'm still thinking about painting mine red, but I've I've really grown on that yellow visor. But even still, it's, you know, you can go to Walmart or some other kind of place that has some spray paint and pick up some mm-hmm. Krylon red, you know, automotive paint or plastic paint. You know, you can find it everywhere. Yeah, and just mine, just put a coat over it, and then let it dry, clear it, let that dry, then stick that back in his head, and you're good to go. Yeah, but th- there are people out there who, you know, again, it, there's nothing wrong with that. It's collecting habits. You know, people will go for that color visor rather than the yellow, and you know, you want to pay the extra twenty odd dollars more, or then you know, more fool you in the way. It's like you said, just go and get a. Five dollar tin of spray paint and just do it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Anything else on that topic? I think we covered quite a bit, and there's a lot of good conversation there. Nope. All right. The next thing that I wanted to, you know, I'll I'll kind of save this towards the end because it's really not transformer related. It's more about Batman. So we'll kind of keep the transformer topics uh, going here. Uh, Jay, you had. Uh, a couple of Transformer topics, I believe. I just had the one. Oh, what you did? You okay. About? All right. Why don't you go ahead and uh, yeah. bring it up? Well, I was saw this on TFW. And I thought it'd be interesting to talk about is people who hide toys in stores. <laughs> <laughs> what? Hide toys, as in they see the product on it, they want it, so they don't hide it, or. They yes. can't afford it at the moment or something like that, and they go exactly it like some like secret area. I don't, I don't get paid till next week. It's going among the Barbies. 
<laughs> well, they'll probably find it there because Barbie's so good. If you put it usually in my Toys R Us, if you put it behind the RC cars, it's like those things have just been sitting there. I mean, they're collecting <laughs> dust. And so if I needed to go hide feeding. something, it would go behind the RC cars. And I don't even think that the employees probably don't even straighten that area because no one goes back there anyway. They probably hadn't straightened it in two months because they haven't had a single person down the house. <laughs> I've never thought of that. I think I might start it. Then again, I say that I, in in my in my warm up when the Creo series two come out, <laughs> I was like, I've been in there. I went, oh, I'll have to nip across the bank. Yeah, <laughs> I just hide that behind the other Creos that don't sell the Optimus and Bumblebees. <laughs> so yeah, I'll hands up after that before. <laughs> See, I did it when I was a kid. Uh, <laughs> today, I don't do it just because I'm afraid that. You're obviously doing something shady, and you look and come off as shady, and I don't want someone to think that, like, I'm shoplifting or something like that. It's like, are, not... are you shoplifting? No, I'm just saving these until Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't lose toys. If, uh, like, say, say I'm out buying something, and I only have enough for, you know, what I'm buying, but I know a local collector is looking for it. Yeah. Nine times out of ten, I'll either take it to the front desk and be like, hey, look, this person's going to come pick this up later, or I'll hide it for them. I always, I always find joy in hiding it for them, though, because I'll be like, because yeah. I'll give them like little faint uh, clues as to where it is, and then they text me back. They're like, dude, stop being a dick and just tell me where you hit it. it. Like, okay, so what you're gonna want to do is look behind the uh, police car, RC car. When they get back there, there's just like a note, and they're like, you need to venture it's like a, <laughs> to you know where the Ken dolls are, and you have to think like Ken dolls. Are, oh, that's Barbie. And you have to go. I, I might do that with my mate next time. scavenger uh, hunt. Yeah, send all notes, and then finally into the woman's knickers. <laughs> I, d- I did that with a uh, uh, looking through a bunch of panties. Uh, like, <laughs> what are you looking for? Do you, yeah, you have to send them. Like, because a lot of them, they have the like like little girls' dresses and stuff <laughs> like that. And you end up putting like, and he's having to like search. You know, like people are looking at him like this dude. <laughs> Call the cops! Call the cops! <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. Uh, why, why? Why? So the big issue is hide and stuff. Um, I can I, I don't know. I think that's quite. I mean, I don't know what how much stuff you get Transformers related in where you are, but over the years it becomes sort of a rare bird until very late on when it's like it, it's been dis- distrib- distributed elsewhere, and then we just get the backlash of it. So there's there's a few of it to start off with, like you'll get like a one of this, one of that, and it's like I need to hide that or I need to. Most most places have layaway though. Or at least here. I know Toys R Us, you know, they have layaway. Mm. The only thing that sucks about it is, I don't know if they still do this. They used to charge you $5 to put something on layaway. It was just like their one-time layaway fee, which during Christmas they took away. And I don't know if they added it back or not. But No, oh, we don't. I don't know. layaway years ago. I think it was only on things that came like one to a case, like masterpieces, mm. for, as far as Transformers go. Yeah, I think the, the the last is it layway you call it? Is it? Yeah, you you put up and like you pay like ten percent and they go you know put it in the back and hold yeah. it for you and oh. you got like two months to get it out or something like that. No, that Walmart mean, has it. You know, Target no, has we, it we, I, don't, I know our our Asda, which is run by is, is Walmart. Uh, they don't do anything like that. Um, oh well. No, we don't do anything like that, and especially I think. For the majority of what's in the high street in in Britain, I think there's very few stores would accommodate that kind of service. Um, no, I've, that's very rare. It's, it's just catalogs, I think, as far as I know over here. But I could be wrong. I've never really looked into it. I just get the money, pay for it. It's mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I- I gotta say that the two stores that I probably miss the most, and I guess you guys can you know name yours as well, but two stores that I miss the most: KB Toys and Service Merchandise. Just they would just clearance stuff would come out of the box clearanced, and that's probably yeah. why I'm, they're not around anymore. But uh, I got a lot of Captain Power stuff from Service Merchandise. Like you can get started off at forty dollars or thirty dollars, and then uh, a week later, ten bucks. I I actually miss um, 
over the side. Toy Master and Woolworths. Um, Toy Master was probably the last place I've done that layway stuff because I can remember clearly when I was, and I'm going back about probably about 18 years now, 18, 20 years, that's how long it is, um, getting the Dinobots on layway. Oh, wow. You know, sludge, slag. And the, the, this store just seemed to have and just the whole range of Transformers and it was like, oh, can I, you know, me pocket money go down, pay me pocket money and that was boss. And uh, Woolworths used to just, again, it was probably, used to have everything just on clearance. It was great. I missed them. All right, you guys ready to move on to the next one? Or? I, I thought Jay had something uh, about uh, your own you know, if you were to make your own collector's oh, collection. Oh, yeah. yeah. Your own, oh. Yep. Okay, why don't you go ahead and bring that up then? Yeah, like last week how we had our own third party, I, I thought it'd be interesting to make your own, like, you, like, club figure for, like, you. what would you do for a club figure type thing? And it has to be and a what mold would you use? of a mold or repaint or yeah. something like that. The, yep. Just a, from any era. Any. I'm gonna look at G1 then. You guys can. can oh, go I was about. gonna say I already already have my answer. If, if no one else, uh, if no one else wants to go first. Uh, I would um. Back whenever 3H still owned the license, they showed off the RID Megatron and Transmetal 2 Megatron's colors. And we still haven't gotten that yet, and and. People have been clamoring for it, and we still haven't gotten it. So I think if, if I were to do that, I would I would totally um, use that mold and repaint it to that character, along with you know all the other um, characters and you know mock-ups of figures that were done for the 3H Wreckers at that time, like DevCon from Beast Machines Mirage and uh, you know uh, Transmetal. Uh, Fractal from you know the Transmetal Pterosaur with a different head, I believe he had, and just I mean I, I would I would totally finish that that lineup off. Um, so the the possibilities are are pretty much endless. And then there was like the Beast form Alpha Trion from uh, I think it was like Beast Machine Snarl or, or Cybertron Li uh, Leo Breaker, one of those two they were going to use for it. So that's what I would do. What do you guys think? Mine's going to be G1. <laughs> I've got no way. I have no see, idea. See, I was going to, like, if we're doing G1, uh, I was going to say, if you can if you can do the G1 molds, like you guys said, it, it's not the Diaclone, the official Diaclone versions, uh, but I would make the Hasbro repaints of some of the Diaclone figures. So you give me the black tracks, the red tracks, uh, you give me, you know, the purple uh, hoist and stuff like that, and so on and so forth. The the prowl, you give me the, you know, the black prowl, where it's basically the colors are flipped. Uh, give me things like that. And, you know, they're obviously, when they, you look on there, it doesn't say, you know, Diaclone, because it's not, you know, official Diaclone. But for the people that don't really have thousands of dollars to spend on like one figure, they can you know pick it up for whatever they charge, you know, 40, 50 bucks for a figure through the, the subscription service. I'd jump all over that line. I'd sign up for a sub. I'd yeah. like, uh, speaking of the Diaclones, I mean, I know the Wheeljack mold was destroyed, but I'd like to see, is it Marlboro? Marlboro? Yeah. yeah. I'd like to see him redevelop because he had a, a unique head, man. He, you know, he had like the Kanye West blinds sort of going up, the starfish <laughs> head. Um, you know, I've I've got a custom of um, Marlboro as well. I I I, uh, I picked up the, the the head sculpt and for the generations wheeljack, and then painted the uh, wheeljack into Marlboro colours. And he's he's gorgeous, and when I was intrigued when I was building, I was going, where did he come from? And I found out that he was an original Diaclone, so that'd be pretty cool to see something like that released again. Yeah, I'm all about giving us the figures that it, it the the prices, unless you know hmm. you you're just made of money, then you know you're probably never going to be able to obtain 
and you know all you're doing is repainting it. Yeah. That's if you, you know, can find one at that. Yeah, yeah. but you know, just repaint it, and it's obviously a Hasbro version. So I mean, you, you're covered there, so people don't like knock it off and stuff like that. <laughs> Anyone else have any other Transformer related topics? Let's see. Here's one. This was this was a, a topic from uh, a, a a guy called Raven One X. Um, he done the vlog called Killing Optimus. Uh, and it was sort of, it sort of come out like if Optimus if Optimus was completely wiped out, his body was completely, you know, destroyed and stuff like that. Why is he always dying and why is he always coming back? To sell toys. <laughs> exactly, and you, yeah. it's just it's one of them ones of you know why why keep killing them off? Why you know is he extremely like stupid and just likes getting blown up and eaten alive and everything else? I think they like to show off the the fact that Optimus is is willing to to take the plunge. I think they like to show off the fact that he's he's very self sacrificial. Sacrifice. Uh, in 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 his beliefs and and what he wants to to achieve and how he wants to achieve and he's willing to to go that extra step and not look back and not hesitate you know no questions asked about it. Well, because, I mean, you, have to, you have to look at the very first Optimus. So it all starts with the beginning. And why did they kill Optimus in the first place? It's obviously to bring in Hot Rod Rodimus Prime because uh, whenever they released the season one figures, uh, you had your Optimus Prime. Well, now season two here is like oh, you want we we're missing a spot here. There's a chance for a different character or you know upgrading or something, but we're having to sell the exact same thing for you know a season two release. So whenever the movie came in between season two and season three, uh, you know Optimus kind of had to die there, and you know so did Megatron because you're selling the same thing over. And this is whenever the '86 movie is whenever you started seeing Hasbro. Come out with their own figures. You know, these were actual yeah. made by Hasbro car and things like that, instead of um, you know Diaclone, Microman, and Toy Box and things like that. Uh, Optimus had to die. They had to give him, you know, uh, you know the new uh, body and stuff like that. He was going to be Hot Rod and then Rodimus Prime. Um, that, it, that's really uh, the the original reason. It was because they want they needed a new toy to sell uh, in that place. Egg. Yeah. And then that's yeah, why you kind of see that continue. Yeah, I mean, it, it, again, it's it's quite it does you always die. I mean, because he's dying nearly every every other episode, and it gets a bit tedious sometimes. And okay, he's a, he's a great character by by all means. He's one of the most famous characters, and you know, you get attached to this father figure, this the, the daddy, if you will. Um, and then you kill him off, and then he comes back, and it's like you know, Dakota said and stuff. But it does get a bit. It's, Tedious to get a bit stupid now and then bring them back. And yeah. when you kill them off in the in the Michael Bay film, it was like, oh, here we go. If he doesn't die in this next film, it, you know, Transformers is not the same. <laughs> yeah, and which you know, apparently Optimus dying really wasn't uh, uh, accepted as well back in the '80s, if I recall correctly. No, no. because the GI no, Joe was not. releasing a movie and they were gonna have Duke die. Right. And they yeah. saw the backlash from Optimus Prime. They were like, yeah, let's change that part in the story here because we're not going to have our franchise start going downhill. Yeah. <laughs> Kids locking themselves <laughs> in the room for two weeks and not eating. Optimus <laughs> dead. Yeah, I think, I think part of that had to do with uh, the Rodimus Prime toy being such a shitty toy. <laughs> um, the Hot Rod was a better, better toy. And yeah, Hot Rod yeah. was awesome. like in the movie, you know, he was all throughout the movie, but. Don't really see him. It's, you see him a little bit in season three. Um, yeah. When when but Rodimus the, gives uh, up the Matrix the, and stuff, and Scourge turns into some like weird mutant. Yeah, there's always there's always that concept of you know as long as the Matrix around, Octopus will be around, or even even throughout the comics and stories. There's uh, I think it's in Generation Two where Octopus gets totally devoured by the swarm. And the only reason he comes back is because of the Matrix. You know, the the Matrix is just the key to to basically short writing everything rather than giving like 
a proper death. Yeah. The Matrix just goes, yeah, I'll just bring you back from a beam of light and say, well, it's funny. I am here again. He, he died in the movie, and that was one I mean, they just had a vendetta against, like, if you're an Autobot leader, because <laughs> Optimus Prime, you're dead. Ultra Magnus, now you're the leader, bam. Uh, you know, thanks sure, for playing, you you're dead. Well. And it just kept on going back. And then you kind of look at the whole Optimus Prime, he's dead. And then when Metroplex died, the junk yawns, they just put them back together, put some wax on them. And, you know, yeah. you're good to go, buddy. You're back alive and fully functional. Why couldn't they bring Optimus Prime there? But then also in season three, you have two other times that I believe Optimus dies. There's one where yeah, he's in like a tomb, and then the other one where they sent him off into the sun. And so you're like, okay, he's finally gone. And you see yeah, the thing, you see him explode in the sun, the ship. But then at the very end of season three, they're like, oh, that ship hasn't made it to the sun yet. It's still traveling. Yeah, that was the dumbest thing. Yeah, is this the end of Optimus Prime? Find out tomorrow on the return of Optimus Prime. It's like what? Yeah, the, 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 yeah. <laughs> the voyage continues. <laughs> yeah, because the, the, I, I always wondered that because it's is it Dark Awakening where he get basically become zombie bot, isn't it? Yeah. Um, where the Quintessons go, ah, oh, fuck with your head here. Have LSD. Um, and the other one is the return of Optimus Prime, where it's like, okay. We just seen you like go Nova. I always wondered the what what's the what's the link in between that? And I thought the, the, the easiest way I I come across it was was it must the be some kind of escape the, escape the shit. In his uh, rear view mirror. Yeah. <laughs> what pizza has got two for one? Fuck this, <laughs> you know. The weird thing yeah. about it, the return of Optimus Prime is from the Dark Awakening. He's going into that. Like star or whatnot, he's missing his arm. He's just blown to crap, yeah. and then all of a sudden, he gets fixed by the human beings who save him from being, you know, blown up or whatnot. It's like, uh, okay, they know the Cybertronian tech <laughs> to yeah. rebuild the his arm. The humans are smarter this. than the than the Transformers. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, yeah, out of that, oh, there was a junkyard hidden in the cupboard. There's like, I'll fix my dad. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> and just the humans found go, oh, he's got an arm. But and then we obviously have you know the Japanese headmasters as well. Yeah. And they kill him again in there. <laughs> yeah. After like the first or second yep. episode, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Does he, does, does, uh, does he ever come back within the the within the headmasters? Because he comes back in victory, doesn't he? Isn't he? No, he never comes back. Come on, guys. No, None of us haven't seen victory yet. Sorry, I, I've got the box. At the, I've got the no, box. At the and because uh, a lot of people, they look at it and they're like, "Oh, Power Master for Optimus Prime." No, it's Jin Rai. He's a totally different character. So he's yeah. nothing related with Optimus Prime. But they, the way they made the toy is, we need to give the impression that he looks like this like is the Optimus. new Optimus Prime, and we use the name Power Master Optimus Prime so we can help sell the toy. In theory, wasn't there a theory going around uh, that? Jinrai's truck, the truck that Jinrai bought, was actually a, just a Optimus Prime in um in like a deep sleep, like in stasis lock, essentially. Stasis. It's supposed to be a new body for him. Yeah, or something like yeah. that. Yeah. So I mean, technically, I guess. I can see. How, I can. I could see how that might might work because you only have to look at the Michael Bay film. Where you know Bumblebee is potentially a sleeper, he's waiting for the perfect moment. So I don't know. It's I love I love digging up stuff like that of trying to explain the, the crossover, the links that probably fascinates me. Well, we were we were also talking about on the ADD podcast on Rockimus uh, Primes, and we were talking about tracks. And in I believe it's oh, season man. two that. Like tracks his friends with what's the what's the guy's name? Raul. 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 So in the very first episode, it you, you have the impression that oh these two guys they've known each other for a long time you know it's never explained but you know they just know each other and they're they're friends and stuff like that and they drive around. Well, the second time that those two are together, it's like that's the first time they're meeting. So it's like whenever they place the episodes, whoever did it, uh, they put them in the wrong order, and that's not the only yeah. instance that they've done that. Mm. Alright, you guys ready to move on to the last and I don't want to say it's controversial, but uh, it's, it can be. It, it, it could be. Yeah, it Let's could make be. <laughs> Alright, so oh no. Where did that go? 
<laughs> I had it pulled up. <laughs> what I because this is something I wrote, and here it is. All right, so here's some food for thought. Is the time that we finally had a black Batman, uh, and I'm referring why to why is that uh, Batman? Race. Why why so? I, why is it? Can I, I? I'm giving an example. Come on, Jay. So the argument can be made that uh, characters, Superman, Batman, etc., are white in the comics, and uh, they were created so, or they were. And that's where they were created, and they should be white on screen. Uh, same goes for Storm, Black Panther, etc. As a viewer, maybe, uh, as a viewer, maybe it's just easier for us to accept that something is very familiar with this. Is you know, as far as you know, the colors go. Uh, is it easy to take a look back at Halle Berry and the Catwoman film and say it was a bad film, but it really had nothing to do with Halle Berry being a bad actress. It was just a really bad put-together film. Uh, I can see why directors and casters should shy away or want to shy away based on this film alone. Uh, I don't think Ray should, you know, was really the downfall of it. Uh, the question is, is the world ready for a black Batman? Uh, a friend of mine brought up a good point. Characters in movies should be cast on t uh, talent alone and how it relates to the character versus you know race of character. And so basically kind of go on a little bit there. Um, the character that I think would be a perfect black Batman, he's supposed to be the next James Bond after Daniel Craig, and he's actually you know the first black guy to play James Bond, and that's Idris... Uh, Elba, which is a, you know, I don't know how well known he is, but uh, he played in HBO The Wire. He was Stringer Bell. Uh, he was also in the more recent uh, Pacific Rim movie. And he played in, he, he's Luther on the BBC uh, show, which is really good. So everything he does is really good. He just has that look like you could definitely buy into him being a Bruce Wayne. And it just kind of made me start thinking, you know, they, they, sh in my opinion, you cast the the best actor for the part. It yeah. doesn't really yeah. determine on race, but yeah. at the same time, if someone said no, I want my Superman to be white. I don't want him to be, you know, Mexican Superman or Asian Superman or something like that. Then I, I can see the point there as well. Uh, I actually, you know, had had saw that, and I don't, I don't really read the DC comics, so I don't know how well, um, this particular situation has come out, but I'm going to kind of answer your question with another question, and that is, uh, you know, recently, you know, and, and we are kind of comparing apples to oranges, but we're still comparing change to change, if that makes any sense. But in, in the recent DC Comics, they, uh, if I'm not mistaken, they made the Green Lantern uh, gay, and I don't know how that really turned out. So essentially, I guess, look at how that may have turned out and then ask yourself if that would turn out, but... Um, also, had a little bit more to add to it. I think for it to be a black Batman, it would, you know, or a black Wolverine or whatever. Yeah, yeah, or, or whatever. You know, it's like maybe make them a separate character altogether. Essentially, um, you know, just like just like they did with the Green Lantern, Hal Jordan and uh, John. I don't know what John's last name is. Sure. You know, kind of passing the mantle, sort of thing. You know, give give us a new character with a new backstory, and I think that would be that would be the best. Um, but it has to be Batman, you know, is the point because like my one friend, he goes, well, there is a you know a black character in the Bat universe or whatever. But I was like, no, I'm talking main character headline. He's Batman. Yeah, and uh, that's what I was talking about, passing the mantle kind of thing. So you like know, in a like new series, Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne decides, you know what? I'm done with this. I can't take this. You know, I'm gonna pass the torch. You know, and it can it can be another billionaire with a ton of money to throw around, or it could be just someone that kind you of know, like a Batman Beyond thing where he kind of yeah. trains yeah. the yeah, yeah. Terry McGinnis. Yeah, but, so yeah. I mean, I'd buy into that. I, th I think that'd be a very interesting twist on things, instead of it just being like, okay, here's Batman, same story that we've seen for the last twenty years, and and then go, you know. It, yeah, it it. I think also. I'm just saying this from an aesthetic approach. The suit would all would possibly I would see changing as well, and I'm because I'm, I don't know how they go about the design process. But I'm sure they, they would work in um, certain 
definitions or certain highlights that would fit the potential features of, say, a black guy or blah de blah to go about a Batman suit. Um, but a lot of stuff would also go on design. Does this particular aesthetic design fit this particular person? Or would it, for, for instance, as much as he may be a black guy, you know, would he be quite shielded up rather than have a face plate, like, you know, a face cover or make it something like that? I'd, I'd, and well, like the character I, I was talking about, or the, the actor I was talking about, he's, I think he's got like a goatee and like, yeah, oh, yeah. You know, so, I mean, that'd be something that you'd have to lose the goatee, you know, <laughs> because that, that just look, that's kind of part of your wanting to hide who you are as Batman, your secret identity and stuff like that. Um, having a goatee kind of gives it away. Have every cop in Gotham, all right, we're looking for a dude with a goatee. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the idea. I, I think it's it's good to step into that, like you said, Give it a backstory. Give it a, a strong backstory. Why, you know, maybe he's he's also been also been someone in the shadows, even as part of the story, but never been a main character. And then pass it on. You know, they've done a bit Robin at the end, like that Blake at the end of Batman Rises, isn't it? And pass them, pass it on, so, like discreetly or with a good backup. I, I think, think that's the way to go about it. Yeah, and I think had they, you know, the time to have done that would have been whenever DC rebooted their universe. Like I said earlier with making the Green Lantern gay, it would have been a great time to be like, okay, well, you know, we'll make Bruce Wayne black or we'll make, you know, Hal Jordan, you know, or, or you know, or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, the, because the whole thing kind of, I mean, your mind can start thinking about all different types of ways because... Think about all these characters. A lot of them were written back in like forties, fifties. I mean, yeah. when, when racism was like like at its peak, you know. Yeah. yeah. And, and today, uh, obviously, the world's changed. I mean, there's still some, you know, ignorant people that you know are racist or uh, you know sexist or whatever the you know. And you, you, they you just got uh, called. Uh, you you saying that reminds me of the Marvel comics. Whenever um, it, it was it was a part of the Avengers, you know, because during the sixties and uh, you know that was whenever the Civil Rights Act was going on, right? Was it the sixties or the seventies? Seventy was seventy two. Was it? I don't. Yeah. So about that time. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, so somewhere around that time, well, you know, the Avengers had had already been a pre-existing continuity, but what Marvel Marvel's really good about taking current world. Things and then placing them into their into their comics, which is why I like Marvel so much more than DC. You know, they, uh, you know, due to the Civil Rights Act in in the Avengers comics, that's whenever they brought on Falcon and uh, Black Panther, I believe. Um, you know, into that fold, so they were accepting of it. You know what I mean? And it was it was interesting that they touched on that in in that in those comics. And I. Uh... You know, you guys were also bringing up some of the other characters. You know, like I said, uh, you had Halle Berry as Catwoman. I mean, that was just a bad film. You know, that's yeah. not. You could get anyone to play. You know, be that actress in that film, and it would have still been bad. Uh, you also, like you brought up, you know, Kingpin was by God. What's his name? Uh, Michael, 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 Clark. Michael, Clark. Yeah, Michael Clark Duncan. Duncan. He did yeah, a great he Kingpin. Uh, that was a fantastic Kingpin. Yeah. Yeah. I totally, totally. agree. Uh, Daredevil was a shitty actor, a shitty character. <laughs> but he's getting a second chance, though. He's getting a second chance. Uh, I guess it was just the whole, you know, Ben Affleck, you know, being named, and it it all kind of goes on him. It's really going to depend on the way that you do the story, and also the uh, director as well. You know. Yeah, I mean, you, you look at Marvel and you look at DC. Also, take a look at Disney. You know, Disney only from about five years or not long ago introduced their first black princess, or no, Asian princess. Yeah, because all the other been was it Swan Princess or something? No, maybe not. Something no, like the Fr Princess and the Frog. Okay. Yeah, that one. Okay, we had we had Jasmine, didn't we? Who was was it a I don't know. 
<laughs> yeah, Jasmine and Aladdin. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, we had Jasmine, but all the others have been white since you know fairly on the white side and stuff, and they brought in there, and that that's the way of, of Disney basically going. Okay, maybe we need to look at our values again and start integrating other things. And I've no, I haven't heard the Hal Jordan one, the the, the gay, but there's nothing, nothing wrong with that at all. Of I don't even. You know, yeah, I, that doesn't even know, bother I, me. Yeah. These are icon, these are icons, you know. Children, you know, look up to them, and you know it's cool, you know. Instead of all the ra- again racial and sex, sexual bigotry and s- crap that's out there, it's you know superheroes can be this and superheroes can be that. It's role models and it sends a good message. It's like it's like I don't know in Transformers Prime, knockout, knockout potentially the the one line is he comes out with it's going are you a gay robot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you look at him, he's full of himself. He goes, Oh, well, I like exhausts and I like automobiles. And, you know, he's all about the cosmetics. It's like he sits there and puts, it's like, it's like, Ju- Ju- uh, I-, I put him next to Julian Clary. It's like he talks to me, okay, right now. It's like, Yes, well, I like that. It, you know, I like his me. I thought he was awesome. I never looked at it like that. But I no, knockout that. to me just comes out with the most puff one liners in the world. They go, "You are boss," and it's I love him. You know, it like you kind of brought up that it's this is knockout's theme song. It's <laughs> what? <laughs> it is. Yeah, this is totally Fred. Theme. <laughs> all right, I think we all know that song. That's not the same song. I but like you it. said, it's it's good that you have you know uh, for superheroes like different races or I uh, like Daredevil when um, God I just Stanley whenever he was creating the character Daredevil, uh, you know it made him blind. He was just like you know this is very interesting because it lets you know the little blind kids. That you know their parents can read them, uh, you know this comic book and explain it to him. Be like he's blind too, you know, and this is how he overcame this. And it gives them a hero, and yeah. you know that that's really cool. And if they did like a deaf one or something like that, you know, uh, it really as someone that can you know see and hear and talk, um, it, it's really good for you know someone like me that I can look and see what you know a blind person has to deal with on a regular basis and struggle. I mean, obviously not this not all blind people are superheroes, but uh, <laughs> you know just their regular everyday functions, how they had to fold their money and you know to yeah. make sure that they weren't getting ripped off. I mean, that was little nice touches that I did like about that film, even though I thought the overall film was not good. Yeah, I found, I found that brilliant about like the, the behind the scenes of how he was. How Affleck sort of partnered up with a blind guy and folding the money and this and that. I thought that was, was like, wow. Yeah, yeah. got to do that every day. Count your steps. You know. He did his research from... totally, but he just he just executed it poorly, in my opinion. Affleck. She's got a big chin. <laughs> I don't like his chin. <laughs> it's gonna look funny when he puts the on that cow for the first it's time. A proper, it's a proper ass chin, isn't it? It's like, yeah, it really like, is. People are gonna look at him and be like, "Oh, it's Batman." I'm like, wait a second, that's either Jay Leno or Ben Affleck. <laughs> it's like it's you know the Joker's gonna gonna show up and he's gonna be like, "Hey, Batsy, you got an ass on your face." <laughs> 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 I'll just pop my bike in here. <laughs> I figure we kind of wrap it up there, unless anyone has anything else to add. No, I'm cool. Good. All right. Well, thanks for everyone joining us. Thanks for people in the live stream, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye. Thank you. Thanks.